sidelines waiting for some sort of direction or at least further direction out of Europe? The volumes are a huge uh, problem at the moment. It does look like a lot of investors are sidelined. And when you consider about 30 to 50% of the volume going through the market at the moment is algorithmic trading, then you can see that the market's really quite asleep at the wheel. Given these type of volumes that we're seeing in November, we only saw $3.6 billion traded today compared to the average in October, which was $4.7 billion. So that's a, about a $1 billion worth of trade below the average in October, which was a slow month anyway. A lot of brokers are going to be questioning what Christmas volumes are going to be like because these are uh, Christmas-like volumes. Then again, if we have a look at the market performance, only down by 0.2%, but it's hard to read anything into it given that we saw such a strong day on Friday where the market gained 2.6%. We have a look at some of the themes today. We are starting to see the banks trading ex-dividend and that's starting to be a weight on the market and Westpac really dragging down that banking sector today. But a positive in that mining space was Beach Petroleum's takeover for Adelaide Energy. We saw Adelaide Energy up by a massive 43%, one of the best performers on the market. And of course, computer shares shares also up by 15.6 percent after getting antitrust approval for its uh, US deal so that was a positive but altogether for the investors that were out there they were positioning themselves defensively consumer staples telecom utilities these were the areas which were gaining ground and of course we saw the ANZ job ads coming out for October and we saw a fall of 0.7 percent there that's a leading indicator so pointing to some weakness in the Australian jobs market over the next six months and that's the fourth consecutive month of losses there. On its share price there. Julia Lee, are you as optimistic as we saw a lot of investors today? I think the market wasn't pricing in this deal going ahead and that's because if you look at Bank of New York, Mellon and uh, Computer Share, in terms of transfer sh services in the US, they hold n the number one position and the number two position. So there were some significant competition hurdles to overcome and yet the US antitrust regulators or the competition regulators have okayed this deal. So it's a huge positive for Computer Share. If you have a look at the Computer Share share price over the last 52 weeks, it's been under a lot of pressure because in this type of environment where we're seeing an extremely high Aussie dollar we are seeing that uh, that currency exchange eating into earnings but the flip side of that is when they make acquisitions offshore they're using that high Aussie dollar to their advantage so there's been a number of acquisitions made by computer shares over the last 52 weeks and it does look like this one has been a pretty big one for computer shares to bag so using that uh, high Australian dollar to its advantage and going into the US and I guess the market has hasn't been putting a lot of probability on this deal going through because of that number one, number two position in transfer services by these two entities. So it does look like a big positive for computer share there. That we're seeing in uh, in Europe at the moment, Julia, and in particular, uh, uh, particular, I should say, yesterday, seemingly the Greek PM George Papandreou. Uh, falling on his sword, so that there could be a, a unity coalition government uh, moving forward. What sort of reaction, if any, do you think the market had? to that today as you say it was only down about two tenths of a percent I mean would it have been steeper falls if that hadn't happened or would we have seen positive moves I mean do you think it was ignored how do you think the markets digested it I think the problem in the market reaction today is that it pretty much ignored what happened over Greece we've seen the Prime Minister there Papandreou looking to uh, to step down and then a new ruling party looking to okay the European Union uh, changes that were agreed to a couple of weeks ago and yet the market didn't really see a big reaction mm. and the key thing to notice here is that the market's now turning its sight to Italy and we're watching those 10-year bond yields with a lot of interest and the problem is once confidence disappears from the market what you do see is a breakdown in the market you see volumes absolutely disappearing very quickly and that's what we're starting to see we have a look at the 10-year yields for the Italian bonds on Friday we saw it reaching an all-time euro uh, high post euro high at 6.43 percent and an all-time closing high as well at 6.385 percent and we've seen a sharp increase in these 10-year bond yields since July even though the European Central Bank is buying into both Italian and Spanish bonds at the moment. So the market is watching this area with interest. Last week, I think not a lot of people tended to focus on it, but another thing that was a blow to confidence was the European Financial Stability Fund. It was looking at an auction for 5 billion euros with a 15-year term. They reduced that to then a 10-year term, still looking for 5 billion euros. They didn't see the demand out, so out there so decreased it to 3 billion euros with a 10-year term and in the end we saw a statement saying that they've pulled the auction altogether because of market conditions so when you start to see events like that you can see that Europe very firmly in focus and why there's such low volumes on the market so Europe 
very important one. Investors markets focused in on Italy, and I guess the 10th of November is going to be an important one because we do see an Italian bond <coughs> auction, and the market's going to be watching both demand and the yields coming through on that auction.